There was a very old crocodile, so old that he had witnessed the building of the pyramids. But now he was suffering from rheumatism and no longer able to catch his food. The quality of his diet was deteriorating by the day. In desperation, he decided to eat one of his family. What's he munching on now? The old croc does get on my nerves, thought the old crocodile's youngest granddaughter. You rotten beast! You ate my son, didn't you? Although his thousands of years of longevity entitled him to much respect, the family decided he would have to be put down. However, no one could make even a dent in his thick, aged skin. And so they decided to hold another family meeting. Unable to bear the disrespect of his family, the old crocodile said goodbye to the Nile. One day he went out into the sea. He felt lighter somehow, and the salty taste was quite pleasant. The salt water and the sun did wonders for his rheumatism. Hello, big lizard. Hello, big spider. I'm not a spider, I'm an octopus. Then, hi, octopus. Say you do have a lot of legs. Normally an octopus has eight legs, but I have twelve. Have you tried to count them? Of course, I can count to twelve. The octopus treated her new friend to a variety of fish that she caught just for him. With twelve legs, surely she won't notice if I eat just one. She might even be lighter on her feet with less body weight. Good morning, Mr. Crocodile. It's time to get up. Good morning, Miss Octopus. How are your legs? Very well, thank you. Did you count them? Yes, of course. All twelve of them. Perfect. She can't count, thought the crocodile. By the way, there's a sea that's even better than this for your rheumatism. Shall I take you there? Let's go right away. The two of them swam through the Suez Canal and into the Red Sea. Before dark, they reached a small, uninhabited island. The crocodile asked the octopus to bring him some dinner. The octopus was exhausted from the heat, but managed to muster enough energy to catch some fish for him. The greedy crocodile was well satisfied. But when night fell, he couldn't restrain himself from eating another of the octopus's legs.
the crocodile ate the fish that she brought every day and helped himself to a leg every night. Just one, no more. Since he could count up to one, he suddenly realized that there was only one leg left. Is that it? I thought 12 legs was a bit more than that. There was a terrible struggle going on in the crocodile's heart. His love for the octopus was twofold. On the one hand was the love for her kindness, her modesty and her knowledge. On the other was the love for her juicy legs. That night, the octopus lost her last leg. Mr. Crocodile, I think I can't move. It's so hot, and we've been here quite a long time now. Yes, it's been 12 days. I thought you couldn't count. Well, that's right, I can't, can I? I must have made a mistake. You know, you've got rheumatism. When mine was bad, I couldn't feel my legs. It was almost as if they'd been cut off. It's funny. I feel no sensation in my legs. If I couldn't count or didn't know that I have all 12 legs, I would think they were all gone. Well, don't worry about it anyway. Today, I'll go and catch the fish. The octopus slept happily, reassured by the crocodile's kindness. But that night, the crocodile was burning with desire to devour his love. She tasted absolutely marvellous. But when the crocodile had finished eating her, he wept bitter tears of remorse. Alone on the rock, the crocodile soon became bored. He tried to think up games to amuse himself, like taking big breaths through his mouth and blowing the air out of his nose, or picking his teeth with fish bones, or holding big shells up to his ear to hear the sound of the ocean. But even so, he was bored. He really regretted having polished off his lover the one thing that gave him any pleasure at all was remembering how wonderful she tasted. Why do I have to stay here? I could just go home to Egypt. Why didn't I think of that before? The crocodile pondered the question for a long time but eventually made his departure without giving himself an answer. They are funny. They seem to be scared of something. Ah, they seem to remember me. But I can't see why they make so much fuss about me eating one silly little croc. The crocodile got really tired of being by himself and finally decided that starvation was a better option. He lay down on the dry mud and waited for death.
I think I must be dead. I seem to be in crocodile heaven. Now what is going on here? After eating a girl, the crocodile became sleepy as usual. crocodile, installed on an altar and given a young maiden to eat every day, is alive to this day. But he hasn't a clue why all the other crocodiles ran away from him, or why humans adore him so much. The old crocodile is a modest fellow, and if he found out the truth it would surely make him even more modest. Because the truth is, the hot water from the Red Sea has turned his body as red as a lobster. Oh